the school new year. It's a great, great day. We're super excited. I'm back with Career Conversation Cafe, and we are getting ready for a big semester ahead. I have a couple of things I want to share with you before we get started. We do have uh, uh, several things coming up. The biggest thing coming up is our spring career fair. It's going to be the first week of February. We have events from the 1st to the 4th. A bunch of sessions ready to prepare you for that event and then on Friday February 5th mark your calendars is our spring career fair from 9 to 3 it's gonna be virtual you can find all the information at utep.edu slash careers there's a lot of information on there um, so grab your mug and coffee and we'll get started here in a bit we have an awesome guest today I'm gonna to take off my new year hat that I now need to put away um, we have a guest today, Dr. Adriano, who is an associate professor at the College of Education. He's going to be joining us to talk about how to find a mentor. And I know right now is the perfect time to find a mentor, whether it be at the career fair or in class or in school, anywhere around in our community. We're going to get tips on how to find them, how to keep them, how to make sure it's the right fit for us because it is a, a two-way street. So grab your coffee, take a sip on this kind of cloudy, cold day, and let's get started. So he's going to join us right now. Any questions, put them in the chat. Uh, just another heads up. Again, we have on February 5th is our Spring Career Fair. Hello, Dr. Adriano. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing good. Do you have your nice cup of coffee or tea? Yes, oh. I do. It's right here. Cheers. Oh, that's a <laughs> nice cup. Yes, our mug. thank you. All right. So we have not enough time to talk. There's so much we could talk about for the mentorship um, tips. So let's get started. First question is why seek out a mentor? So a lot of students just are curious, like why? Why do we need a mentor? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question because you know I didn't want to just right away dive into how uh, before talking about right. why it's important. Uh, so one of the one of the keys is that um, you know there's only so much that we can learn from our classes, and so mentors can complement what we can learn uh, beyond our classes. That's one reason. Um, the other is that mentors can help us improve, you know, our, what we know, our skills, and even our attitudes in terms of the, uh, the attitudes that we need for, for our particular profession. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is that they can let us know about opportunities, whether opportunities to, you know, go to national conferences or internships, and even in terms of, uh, you know, jobs are concerned. And then um, the other is that they can become part of our, what we call a support network, right? right. Uh, professionals that we can go to for recommendation letters, references, and even advice as we go through, through our careers. Um, but I think if, if I had to kind of, you know, put an umbrella on that first question is that mentors help us transition from what, wherever, whatever le level we are at professionally to the mm -hmm. next level that we want to get up to. So they are, they help guide you into that kind of process, help you lead, they almost help you lead the way, they walk with you as well. And it's a learning experience for both. So, okay, so it's important to seek out a mentor because they can give you lots of extra support and guidance. So let's jump into what do you expect from a mentor? What can you expect from a mentor? Being that you, I'm pretty sure have been a mentor and have been a mentee as well. So one of the first things is that, you know, many of us are our first generation students. So we don't know what we don't know. So and what's a great need, way to put it. And yeah, and what we and what we need to know, right, professionally. So it like you said, it's important for us to know what to expect from the mentor. And if we don't know that, then what I would suggest is find out, do, do your research in terms of your particular field. OK, let's say, for example, you're studying political science. You want to do some research in terms of, okay, what are the knowledge bases? What are the skills and the mindsets that you need to be successful uh, in, in politics, for example, okay? Um, and once you find that out, then you have to be, make an honest assessment of yourself and say, okay, where am I strong? What, you know, what are my strengths and where do I need to improve? Once you've identified the areas of improvement, then you need to look out for those professionals that, you know, mirror those areas of improvement. So if, for example, you know that you're not very good at social networking, at, you know, mingling, at, you know, um, maximizing the benefits of a, of a conference, 
then you want to you want to look for professionals that you know or you have heard um you know are very uh are very skillful in terms of you know le learning from from national conferences mm -hmm. um so those are some of the things that that you need to know the other is that you want to be able to you know go to different resources in terms of mentors uh sometimes some of your own uh, peers you know your fellow students uh can suggest mentors um you can also learn about mentors from student organizations uh a lot of professional associations have student memberships that are mm -hmm. really affordable i mean some i've seen that only charge like 10 dollars a year and oh. a lot of these associations have annual conferences and they have an, uh tracks for students only so you can learn a, a lot, about a lot of uh, potential mentors through that and through internships of course and and mm -hmm. some of us um through jobs that we already have right we might right. be able to identify uh some mentors so it, with the ex just like as a recap what to ex or what to uh yeah, expect from your mentor is to definitely do the research in your field see what you're lacking and what you're weak in um, and what you need to strengthen up and see if you can find a mentor to support that and kind of give you that support. Whether, even if you don't know um, what you want to potentially maybe do as a job, but you know your degree and what you want to focus in. Um, what if there's a student who doesn't know what they want to do in their life? What kind of mentor can they seek out and expect? So if they do, they're not sure where they want to go, would it just be so one thing one thing you want to do is meet with different potential mentors right because okay. as you said um you know we all have different uh strengths and different abilities so you might want to uh interview you know different kinds of potential mentors and um when you meet with them you can share with them not only what you expect uh and they can be honest with you and, and tell you okay yeah I, I can help meet your needs or you can also learn what they expect from their mentees, right? And, mm -hmm. and you need to make, again, an honest assessment as to whether or not, um, you know, you're willing to meet those expectations, you know. Um, okay. And then once you've identified, um, you know, after you've interviewed, let's say, several people, once you've identified the folks that you really, not only have you identified that they can meet uh, your needs, but you're comfortable with them, Mm -hmm. um then you definitely want to you know set up future meetings um okay. and you know right now because we're in the middle of a pandemic of course those pan those so meetings virtual. have to be virtual right yeah but even in virtual <clears throat> meetings you want to make sure that there there aren't a lot of distractions you know now on the side of the mentor i mean that's that's kind of like out of your control um, but at least from your side, you want to you want to be in a situation where, where you're not distracted, you know. Okay. Um, and uh, go ahead. You were going to ask me a question. Oh, yes. I'm, no, no. I, w I was agreeing with you. I was like, yes, that, that makes a lot of sense. I just uh, the going into pretty much what you're talking about is how can you identify or what should you be discussing with your mentor? What kind of things and topics since you said you have to set up meetings? What are some things that people can focus on or think about when it comes to those meetings? Right. So, um, yeah, because you want to have one thing you, you want to avoid is just you, you don't want to meet just to meet. Right. So you <laughs> should have a specific agenda. Um, and the other thing you should know is that, you know, it's very possible. In fact, you will learn once you start asking around, you'll learn you know, the professionals that have been mentors in the past. So you'll learn, you know, whether or not they've had experience in mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of potential mentors, uh, they already have ideas. They have specific agenda items, again, because we may not know um, what knowledge or skills we need to build on. And they can tell us, look, if you want to be successful in politics, you, um, and again, I'm going to use, go back to that example of mingling, right? Mm -hmm. um, you need to learn how to mingle, you know, um, we can't assume that, um, that that's a given that we need to know that, right. Mm -hmm. So, so one of the things I, I would also advise is that, you know, there are going to be aspects of the mentoring that are going to challenge us that are going to take us into our out of our comfort level. Yeah. Um, and so we need to be open 
to learn and to challenge ourselves, you know, um, because some of what we might be uh, suggested to do is is going to, you know, take us out of our comfort level. And that's, I think that's where a lot of people or students can have a little bit of fear because I think the approach of uh, talking to a professional is out of your comfort zone in the, in the first place. So let me just ask you if, if we, if a student wanted you to be their mentor, would they, would you feel comfortable with an email, with a phone call? What is the best way to approach, let's say a professor at UTEP, then you really want them to be a guidance and mentor in your life? How would you best? Yeah, that, that's a very it? good question. You know, some of us, um, are more responsive to emails. Some of us prefer phone calls. So one of the things that you have to ask, right, from potential mentors is, what's the best way to communicate with you, you know, and respect that, you know. Um, so, and then the other thing is that, that I would add, too, is that, um, that you show gratitude in different ways. And so after you've already identified a mentor and you've been working with a mentor, is take the time, you know, to express your gratitude. And that can be an email. Uh, that could be, you know, I know this is going to sound old fashioned, but uh, <laughs> traditional thank you notes go a long way. You know, just a simple little note, um, you know, that you can mail uh, or deliver to, to a professor or, or another mentor, uh, you know, goes a long way. Oh, yeah. The handwritten notes are always just that little special touch that not a lot of people do anymore. So that's a great idea right. to add, have, add that appreciation. So let me, now that we talked about kind of like how to meet with the, with a professional or with a mentor, what are some benefits? I know we talked about why seek out a mentor. What are the benefits of having that mentor um, besides getting you outside the bubble and uh, what you mentioned about seeking them? So after, um, you know, obviously, the end goal is that you, you're at a higher level in your profession, right? So once you reach that higher level, that's the greatest benefit, you know. So a student will go from being a student to a professional. Uh, and you go from being, uh, let's say, for example, an entry-level coordinator to then an assistant director. So that mentor basically helps you get to that next level. Um, I want to say, though, that even when you reach that level, one of the things that hopefully you'll discover soon enough is you're going to need a new mentor, <laughs> you know, a mentor <laughs> to help you. So no matter what level you're at professionally, you're going to need mentors. You know, as, as I mentioned to you earlier, um, associate professors need mentors, presidents of universities need mentors. You know, there are other folks that are at your level that can help you uh, improve upon the work that you do. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you were going to ask me this, but I know that, that this is uh, an issue for, for some of us, right? Because um, I was very shy. My, you know, oh. the shell that I had was super strong. I mean, it, it took a lot of effort for my <laughs> friends and what? <laughs> yeah, and others to, to crack that, that really hard shell, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of us haven't had a variety of experiences. So we might be really shy and be afraid to take that first step. What I, what I have learned has helped me is to prepare. What I mean by that is you start out with an email, right? An email, it's safe because you can edit, revise and so forth. And then you send it out, right? Mm -hmm. um, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna call, what I would do in all honesty is I would write out a script for myself, you know? Um, and I think that helps when you're shy is to prepare as much as possible, you know? I, the, thank you for bringing that up. Yes. And that I know a lot of students can agree with that. The, just the shyness and nervous, the, like the nerves of approaching somebody who's technically a stranger sometimes, but you respect them so much and you want to be, want to know more and get guidance from them. So that's really great. So starting with an email guys, and, and hopefully opening that door, scripting it out, practicing. And we have, and I know Dr. Audiano, you can agree with this. We are, we're a commuter school. So a lot of students tend to just school, home, school, home, school, home. And we miss those little experiences. And one of them is finding a mentor. And so take the time to just, now that we're technically at home all the time and there's no school, home, school, home, take the time to just send an email out to someone you feel after you've done your research could benefit you. 
um, this is just for the students. We actually have a question, Dr. A, in the chat. It says, if an undergraduate asks you to be their mentor, what do you expect from the mentee as an undergraduate? So now it's different from grad school. What is for an undergraduate who is finishing their bachelor's? So what, like, what, why, what would I would expect from the mentee? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if that, and in fact, I, I actually was a mentor for this program uh, called Exito, where I was a mentor for, uh, for undergraduate students. Um, and so it's a lot of similarities, a lot of the things that, that, that I've already mentioned, right? Um, mm -hmm. One is I, I expect those students to be open to learn. Um, I expect them to, uh, you know, to be responsive. Uh, one of the challenges that we had as mentors was that um, we would reach out, you know, oh. to them. Uh, I, we would email them, we would call them, and it was hard to, to get a hold of them. Um, and so, and again, you need the, I expect mentees to challenge themselves uh, to to get themselves out of that comfort level. Um, you know, I can remember one particular mentee. Um, he was from, from Colorado, from a small town in Colorado. Um, and even though, you know, this was at, um, you know, at a city um, that wasn't very large, there was still quite a, an adjustment, you know, that, mm -hmm. that that student needed to, um, to go through, right? Um, but I think that the keys are being open to learn and being open to, to new challenges. Okay, so mentees, those are the, 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 I think there was about three tips in there for you to and have kind an, of think yeah, about. And have an agenda, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but tell the mentor, you know, this, this is what I'm looking for, you know, and don't be, don't be shy about that. And that's, that exactly, and I wanted to go into, so we're talking about like a professor to um, a student or part of an organization. Does a mentor always have to be in the university setting? Can you find a mentor out? The community and it, oh, yeah. no, local definitely. jobs, Some right? My, you know, I use the example of politics because I was my, I guess you could say my first profession. Um, <laughs> and some of my mentors were, were community leaders, you know, activists. Uh, some of them were elected officials. Um, and uh, so, no, they, now a professor helped me make that transition from the classroom to the community because I learned that uh, this was Dr. Melvin Potter Strauss, by the way, my my professor Ooh, in, shout in politics. Out. Yes, well, he passed away, but oh, <laughs> oh, shout, out. oh. shout out to this Sorry. guy. Yeah, yes. But I knew that he was active in politics, and so I reached out to him and I told him, you know, Dr. Strauss, I know that there's only so much that I can learn from books. If I truly want to learn about politics, I need to be out there. Can mm -hmm. you help me? get involved. And so once I got involved, then I was able to, um, again, with community with activists, with political activists, with elected officials, and that got me started with, uh, I guess, the first phase of my career. <laughs> so it, and I, that's what I liked that you said, the first phase, which was your first mentor, and then it just built from there and you kept getting mentored into different it, Then areas. it becomes a network, like I said, right? And yeah. the network implies uh, almost like a web, right? Because there's connections uh, of different people. Mm -hmm. I agree. And uh, so sometimes let me, let's say a student's working and um, their boss, maybe it's not the job that they are, want to continue in, but their boss ends up being, the supervisor ends up being a mentor to them unofficially. Can they make it official and use oh, that? Definitely. I just... definitely. And like I said, a lot of it, a lot of it calls on you to have a specific agenda. And if you know, if you don't know what that specific agenda ought to be, then you need to do the research to find out what that specific agenda ought to be, you know, because mm -hmm. like I said, many times, especially when we're first generation students, we don't know what we should we know, don't know, you know, yeah. and I'll give you a, a very simple example. Um, I remember, you know, early on as an undergraduate, um, I didn't know that that one of the keys to success was for you to interact with your professors outside of the classroom, you know, because right. coming from the high school experience for you to meet with a professor or a teacher outside of the classroom was unheard of. Mm -hmm. But when you go to college, that's an expectation. 
you know? And it's not only an expectation, but it, again, it maximizes your learning. You learn more from professors sometimes uh, outside of the classroom or just as much as, as you do inside the classroom. And I thank you for, and you'd be surprised well, I'm pretty sure you're not because you've gone through, you work at Utah. A lot of students don't even know that. They don't think of that. Again, like I said, we're focused on finishing school, doing the best I can in classes that they don't think beyond the, the classroom. Sometimes, not all of you, just, just sometimes. And so having that reminder, talk to your professors, find a mentor, network, 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 get out of that bubble and comfort zone needs to be reminded at the beginning of the semester, which is why I'm so happy you're my first guest because it gives you time as a student to develop that. Um, and I'm so glad you brought that up because even just undergraduates, even graduates, we don't know what we don't know until we have to know it. And so it's helpful to have that kind of guidance. Right. There's new learning at every stage and there's new learning at every phase, you know, uh, uh, again, a university president doesn't from day one, doesn't know everything that he or she is going to encounter, you know, during their tenure. So they, mm -hmm. they have others that they need to rely on. I completely agree. And I have another uh, question. How did you, how did you grow slash maintain the relationship once it's established? So I think we haven't gotten to that and I apologize. We've, <laughs> once you have the relationship, how do you grow it and maintain it besides meeting um, every, you know, every once in a while? So, you know, the, the way that, that it's worked for me and, and from, you know, some of the research that, that I've done, um, a lot of the mentoring happens through what it's called what is actual practice right so for example i reached out to mentors and and i i was not you know i didn't have a lot of experience going to national conferences so i didn't know how to take advantage of that and i didn't know about a lot of national conferences so i had a mentor and so what we did is um i worked with him in terms of writing up proposals to present presenting with my uh, professor. And then some of those presentations turned into research projects, which then turned into articles. So the way to maintain it is to continue working with that student. Because as you said at the very beginning, it's a two-way relationship. That means that the mentor also has to benefit in some ways from, you know, from, from being a mentor to you. And mm -hmm. one of the best ways is to contribute to whatever it is that they're doing, which is going to benefit you too. So it is a mutually beneficial uh, relationship. Now, I'm glad that, that we got this question because the other um, point that I wanted to make as far as mentorship is concerned is that uh, like a lot of relationships, you know, some mentorships uh, will, will stop, you know, will just kind of, or, they'll evolve, right? You go from being mentor, mentee to colleagues, right? That, that happened oh, yeah. to me, right? So I had professors that were my mentors, but then I became a professor. So then, you know, then I had to, you know, go through that transition of no longer seeing myself as a mentee. Now I was an equal. Now equal. I was a peer, you know? Right. Um, and so I don't want students to feel bad that if a mentor relationship kind of, you know, fades out, that that's something that that's a negative reflection on them. It's not. There's a lot of reasons why uh, relationships don't work out. And that's true in terms of mentor and mentee relationships. And it could be, for example, that you've already gained everything that you've gotten that you could get from that mentor. Mm -hmm. And it's time to move on. That's part of your our growth, right? Because yes, one like thing, what you don't want is you don't want to create a codependent relationship you know, where it's not mentor mentee, you depend on each other, you know, beyond even a professional relationship. And, mm -hmm. and you're not going to learn and grow from that. Right. I, yes. And I did want to mention what you said before is you're still networking and you do want to keep them as a oh, networking yeah, opportunity. Wanna, so yeah, don't like be in touch with them. Yeah. So even after you're no longer uh, in that mentor mentee relationship, you want to keep in touch with them. You want to let them know, hey, I got this promotion. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm going on this conference. Um, because, you know, again, they're, they're going to become part of your support network, even if uh, you, you're no longer in the mentor-mentee relationship. Exactly. So it's just, it's great. It's contributed. There's no disrespect. It's all just kind of understood that 
we're going to have an end. There's and hopefully can, an and end. It could evolve, and it can actually evolve to something richer. I'll give you an example. One of my mentors, I consider him a very dear friend now. So, you know, mm -hmm. not only are we colleagues, but we're really good friends. So our relationship has, has evolved and it's, it's become richer, I think. Oh, that's, see, that's great. And so I, I think earlier we had mentioned, like, you don't want to go past the professional, but then sometimes you just become really good. You've been around years together and it just becomes, it reminds me of, and this is 30 Rock. It's a Tina Fey show. The mentor-mentee yeah. relationship just grew into this beautiful friendship. So it's very funny that you mentioned that it does happen. Um, so we're cutting into the 25 minutes. I don't want to keep you any longer because I know no, you have no a very busy schedule. So thank you again, Dr. Ariano. If you guys sure. need a mentor in education, he's the one you want to talk to. <laughs> specifically <laughs> higher education, right? Specifically higher education. Yes. Uh, but if you have any questions, you can follow him on LinkedIn. He does have a LinkedIn account, so you can connect with him on there. Um, just another reminder that we have a career fair coming up, Spring Career Fair, on February 5th, where you can network and maybe find a mentor there as well. Uh, you can also, they'll be hiring for, for positions, full-time, part-time, internships. But if you don't need a job, find a mentor, go informational interview and talk to employers that you could potentially use. So thank you again, Dr. A. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for your question. It. No, thank you. And have a good semester. Go Miners. You be too. safe. Stay warm. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.